mysteries, piled on enigmas, wrapped in puzzles. Jeff Vandermeer ends his weird fiction epic on a note much like that on which it began. In Acceptance, the final book in the Southern Reach trilogy, and the book that I'm reviewing on this episode of SFF 180. Hello everybody, Thomas here as usual, thank you for joining me, and yes, it's true, I am playing a bit of catch up with this one. Now, the universe, when it comes knocking, will be stranger than anything you ever imagined. And for everything you believe you've figured out, a door has simply been opened into new realms and into another excursion into the unknown and the unfathomable. Now, as a body of work, there has been very little in the history of speculative fiction quite like Jeff Vandermeer's Southern Reach trilogy. And now that the whole thing is out, it will probably benefit by being read as a whole work rather than split up as a trilogy. Now, on its own terms, Acceptance, the final book, solves some mysteries, but it suffers structurally from its division into three distinct narrative threads that create a choppy sense of pacing and present readers with the inevitable choice of favoring one or more of the storylines over the others. Now, Area X, if you've been following along, is the transformed alien landscape located somewhere along the American coast. It has drawn hundreds into its mutated depths. It is unpredictably benign or hostile. It can be both at once, and it moves with a sense of purpose whose origins remain shrouded in obscurity. Now, was it an alien ark sent here by a dying race? Was there even an intention that it would find our world to settle on? Now, some of these answers are forthcoming, but Vandermeer, if he can be said to have succeeded at anything, directed his goals towards producing the kind of story seen all too rarely these days in specfic. The kind that keeps entire subreddits thriving and keeps friends staying up until the wee hours of the morning engaged in conversation. And there is value to that because where some people want to insist that science fiction has to be only about entertainment, uh, well, they tend to forget that for a lot of us, all night arguments about books are in their own way, highly entertaining. And it's to Vandermeer's eternal credit that he has had the creative energy and the audacity to produce that kind of story for that kind of fan. Now, I found two of the three story threads to be fairly eerie and compelling. One of them deals with Saul, the lighthouse keeper, whose presence has haunted the trilogy throughout, where he has lurked as a transformed being called the Crawler, deep within the anomalous tower that serves as the epicenter of this visitation called Area X. Now, his story details the advent of Area X, and particularly his encounters with a, a couple of hipster scientist interlopers calling themselves the Seance and Science Brigade. Now, to whatever degree their shenanigans are responsible for the ultimate creation of Area X, it is inevitable that Saul's fate will forever be tied up in it. A different story thread immediately follows the action of Book 2, Authority, and it involves Control, the protagonist of Authority, and Ghostbird, the replicant of Annihilation's biologist character. Now, within Area X, time dilation exists in relation to the outside, so we discover that the original biologist wandered the environment of Area X for 30 years before her ultimate transformation into some kind of unimaginable beast. This seems to be Area X's general policy involving its human explorers. Send a cloned replacement back into the real world while subsuming the original person into itself. But it's a broken, flawed system with almost none of its replicants surviving or thriving, or doing whatever it is Area X meant for them to do, if it meant for them to do anything at all. But the third narrative, on the other hand, which is told in second-person voice, and it's focused on the Southern Reach's psychologist-slash-director, was just incredibly dull and much too expository. Way too steeped in behind-the-scenes political machinations within this shadowy governing body called Central. The director's immediate superior, a guy named Lowry, has agendas. And this is the most conventionally x files material in the entire trilogy, arguably making less sense in the end than any of Chris Carter's flailing around in deep lore for its own sake. But, as big think speculative fiction goes with this powerful a level of immersion into the weird, I'd have to say that Jeff Vandermeer's work on this trilogy as a whole is an utter triumph, whatever my specific misgivings may be about this volume in particular. One day, down the road, I want to give the entire Southern Reach trilogy a fresh, sequential reread, just to discover what new nightmares and speculations I may have missed the first time. 
And when I do, I bet I'll have no trouble finding a bunch of folks to argue about it all with. And that is all I have time for on this episode of SFF 180, everybody. As always, I thank you very much for joining me. And remember, the most important thing, these are reviews. You're not always going to agree with me, but if you enjoyed watching, please hit that like button, share the video far and wide with your SFF reading friends, and above all, please subscribe. That is how SFF 180 grows as a channel. And until I see all you guys next time, happy reading.